Honest the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who teach well. It's peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing his work in truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the brother Batak, but again, through the spirit, with a with another lesson. Lord willing, it's edifying. The title of this lesson is going to be, We Are Going to Show. We we going to show our enemies real terror, you know. Um, and I just want to get a few precepts and um, back up that exact point. Um, and Lord willing. Um, this lesson be edifying. So, without further ado, we'll get right into it. Let's start in the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 18, because one thing that stands out is that recompense is coming for the nation of Israel. Um, we are going to um, recompense, which means to pay back our enemies for all the calamities they have done towards us. You know, because... When they had the upper hand and they had dominion over us, they did whatever they wanted to do in order to oppress us and to, um, they showed their true colors and their hatred towards us. The scriptures record all of the events that happened to the nation of Israel. So when we have our opportunity, which is going to be given to us by Yahweh, Hashem Yahushai to rule over our enemies, we are going to do according to his anger and we're going to recompense them for all of their evil deeds. And that's righteous in the eyes of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. So Isaiah 33 and 18, thine heart, which is our minds, shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? So our hearts, our minds, is, um, going to meditate terror on our enemies because you know it's justified they terrorized us all throughout history when we look up that word terror it means fear or dread um it says terror terrible and go to the root word it means terrible or dreadful For to, to mean to frighten fear, frightful to be terrible, to be dreadful. So that's what we are going to be to our enemies. And it's going to happen in multiple forms. Just lock it her with me. So this is what we're looking forward to, you know, terrorizing our enemies because that's the recompense that they're going to get for what they did. So you cannot feel sorry for these heathens because they did it to us and it will be done to them. And that's justified. So let's get our next precept. Jeremiah 30 and 16, because we got to we got to remember that we are in slavery under the Edomites right now. And guess what? All of our enemies will be un in slavery under us. And that's going to be terrorizing to them. The fact that we are going to rule over them scares them. You know, one event that happened most recently, uh, Edomite was at camp last Sunday. He was he was shaking his head. No. And he was just saying no real loud and shaking his head like he was terrified, you know, and it, and it showed how these devils really feel. Man, they're frightened, man. Not only them, but all of the heathens, you know, most importantly, these Edomites, because they see it. They see their society falling. They see us on the rise. They see these things happening and they're frightened, man, as they should be, because we we recompense is coming. These devils are fucking scared, man, and I'm going to do a lesson on that. But, you know, that's for another, that's a little another time. I want to spoil it. Let's get it. Wrap it to it. Um, Jeremiah 30 and 16. This is a slavery scripture because all our enemies are going to be slaves under us. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. So our enemies are going to be devoured because they devoured us. It's justified. Whatever happens to the heathens is justified because they done it to us. Castrating us, you know, slavering, enslaving us, raping our women, making them sex slaves. Like it's just been all kinds of calamities did to our people that they didn't think they was going to have to pay back for. 
but the Heavenly Father gonna make them fucking pay. And we don't have no problem with that. It says, and all thine adversaries, all of our enemies, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be, say, spoiled. And all that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. So the Lord is changing the turn. He's turning the tables, man. The Lord is turning the tables in our favor, in Israel's favor. And we're watching it. And it's going down beautifully. You know, the Heavenly Father is turning tides in our favor. And soon, very soon, Israel, we're gonna be we're gonna be on top. And there's nothing our enemies can do or say. Because we are gonna be on top. And we're gonna be the uh terrorizing them. But everything that we do compared to what they've done is gonna be in righteousness. We're not gonna be doing the, the, the things that they was doing in wickedness. You know? So the Lord is gonna give our enemies to us for prey. And don't forget, slavery is, is, is frightening to these devils. They're scared. Psalms 149 and 5, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory, which are the saints or the Israelites. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. And it's going to happen in our kingdom when everything is established. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand. Exactly. We're going to have that sword. We're going to have that power. We're going to have that rod of correction to, to bash our enemies' heads in. You know? Because the, love, the Lord only loves Israel. He don't love these heathens. So if the Lord don't love these heathens, then he's going to allow us to do what the hell we want to do to these motherfuckers, man. They are our servants and handmaids anyways. They're going to be our bond maids and bond men. They're going to be slaves under us. So that's what we're looking forward to. Our enemies being enslaved, being slaves under us. And that's, that's terrorizing to them because they know they got to pay for what they did. Verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the, the heathen. See? The heathen. We're going to execute vengeance upon them. You should know what the word vengeance means. It means payback, man. Persecution. You 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 enslaved us. We're gonna enslave you. Vengeance. Revenge. Retribution. To take revenge. To to avenge. To punish. We're gonna punish you. And look, the scriptures right here. <laughs> vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Therefore, if any. It says that therefore if thine enemy hunger eat them if he thirst give him drink for his so for what scripture is they quoting for in so doing thou shalt heap coals on a fire upon his head so the word vengeance go back to the word vindicate which means to avenge or revenge to stake a claim to liberate to act and as an adventure so that's what's going to happen and vengeance belongs to the Lord. That's what we're waiting for. The Lord is going to do it. We ain't got to get no militias and anything like that. We got to arm her up. Fight these heathens. Because guess what? The Lord is going to give them to us. He's going to give them. Hand them over. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to hand over our enemies into our hands. And under our power and dominion. So we can do whatever we will with them. They're going to be our servants. It says... To execute, verse 7 again, to execute vengeance upon the heathen. <coughs> I'm sorry. And punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Just like they did unto us. So payback is a B-I-C-T-H. And these devils are scared. They're frightened, man. They see it coming. There's something coming and they're scared and society's falling. Everything is going downhill for Esau. The Lord is fulfilling his word. Definitely. The Heavenly Father, the true God of the Bible, whose name is Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, is fulfilling his word that he spoke by the mouth of the prophets. And we're seeing it play out in living color, man. 
We're seeing the Lord's words. We're seeing the society falling. We're seeing Esau falling. We're seeing the, the MOTB coming. We're seeing World War III coming. Everything is progressing as the scripture said it was going to. So you cannot deny that this, this Bible is true. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you can know, you see that the scriptures is tr true in their own point or everything that's going on in the earth. So the heavenly father, Yahweh, is doing his will. He's, he's establishing his counsel in the earth and nobody can do anything about it. And this, the Edomites, they see their society going and they're frightened, man, as they should be because Israel is going to rule next. They think... They're going to rule forever. They're sadly mistaken because only Israel is ruling next and forever, you know? <clears throat> All right. Psalms 149 in verse 9. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all the, his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh. I'm going to read the uh, NLT. It says to execute to execute the judgment written against them. This is the glorious pr privilege of his faithful ones. Exactly, it's a privilege. Let me read um, Psalms 149 and 7 NLT. It says, to execute vengeance upon the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains. Okay, it says to bind their kings with shackles. <sighs> All right, so lucky. Kind of doing my. Uh, uh, so these heathens, their 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 people, look, their kings are gonna be bound with chains and fetters of iron, just like ours was, and they're gonna be hauled off into slavery under our people, the nation of Israel. So that's what these heathens are afraid of. They're afraid of Jake ruling over them. They're afraid of that, as they should be, because they know they have to pay. All right, so let's go to um, Joshua chapter 2, because this is um, when the nation of Israel was coming out of the land of Egypt, and the heathens knew about the wrath of the of the Almighty, Yahweh Shah. So let's get it. Joshua 2 and 1, I'm going to try to read through it quickly. And and Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out, uh, sent out of Shittim, Two men to spy secretly, saying, Go to view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and logged there. And it was told that king, the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither to night, to night of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king Jericho sent unto Rahab, bringing, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, um, which have entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I was not whence they are. And it came to pass, about the time shutting up the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out thither, the men went. I would not pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order under under the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the forts. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto them, unto the men, I know that Yahweh hath given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us. It's like you. And, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So how much more when the Lord overthrows Edom the way he's going to destroy him and magnify himself in his, and glorious, Yahweh Shah's glory, appear, glorious appearance is going to be. How you think, how, how much more you think these heathens are going to be afraid of us, man? When the Lord manifests himself, the Lord's going to make a huge statement in the earth, man. That there is a God and he loves Israel. <laughs> you know, the Lord, Yahweh Shah is going to make a statement real soon. 
And that statement cannot be, it's not going to be ignored by these heathens. You know? So they're going to fear the nation of Israel. Just like they feared when we came out of the, the land of um, the land of Egypt. Okay, it says, and she said unto them, I know that Yahweh hath given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us. So guess what? That, ter that same terror that these heathen were feeling when Israel was, you know, conquering and um, taking over and whooping these heathen's asses. That's that same fear that these heathen's going to have towards the nation of Israel because it's, it's, it's that time, bro. It's time for judgment. It's time for Israel to rule. So these heathens are going to be terrified of us once we take over. It says, and your terror is falling upon us, and that the inhabitants of the land land do faint because of you. For we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sahai and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man? So they was afraid. Like, damn, bro. What are we going to do about these people? We can't fight these people. They got a powerful God on their side. Nobody was courageous. Nobody was valiant when it comes to hearing what the Lord did. <laughs> you know? So it's lucky. Like so the Heavenly Father did some miraculous works. And our heathens was afraid. Nobody could even stand up against us. And they was afraid of us. How much more in these times that we're living in now? How much more? The Lord is going to magnify us. All right, so it says, And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there, there remain any courage in any man because of you. For Yahweh, your power, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And these heathens are going to recognize that. Especially once the Lord magnify himself once again in the earth. And he's going to do that in the days that's, that are coming. And Hawashai is going to return. And he's going to make the nation of Israel whole. He's going to cure us. He's going to magnify us. He's going to put us in position and status inside of the earth. You know? And his appearance is going to make a statement. Yahweh Shai is going to make a statement when he returns, man. He's going to make a big statement. It says, Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by Yahweh, since I have shewed you kindness, that ye will also shew kindness unto me, my, unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. So she was like, she was basically asking them not to, you know, destroy her family. You know, and it says, and the men of answered our our life for your it's like it says, and the men answered her, our life for yours, if ye utterly not utter not this our business, and it shall be when Yahweh hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. So, so, so look, just by doing that, that small deed of not giving those men up, she saved, she really saved her family. Then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon was upon the town wall and she d dwelt among the wall and she would and she said unto them get you to the mountain lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there are three days until the pursuers be returned and afterward may ye go your way so the point is after they, the point is that there was going to be um, when the Lord make his statement on earth and execute judgment um, these heathens are going to be terrified of the nation of Israel you know 
So that is going to actually happen again once the Lord manifests himself again in the earth. Because these people in this world, they don't recognize yet, but there is a true God. And he's going to make himself known. He's going to make himself known inside of the earth, you know? So let's get my last precept and I'm going to close this lesson out. Um, getting my day started. So the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11. Daniel 9, 11, it says, yea, it says, uh, Slocky, it says, yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, which that's what they did. That's why we in the predicament that we in now, because of transgressions. But guess what? We got, we got good news, man. Yahweh Shai is returning. The nation of Israel is not going to sin anymore. We're going to be perfect before the Lord. And we just got to be patient and wait for those things to be fulfilled, you know, and the Lord is going to actually do something for the nation of Israel, you know? So... We're going to be made whole very soon. We just got to keep, you know, we got to keep dealing with the, the bullshit of this world. And um, Lord willing, we keep to continue to have faith and endure and believe on the name of Yahweh Hashem El Shai because the Lord is going to wipe us off. He's going to clean us off, man. So we feel like we're looking forward to that. To be cleansed, to be perfect, to be pure, you know? All right, so it says, Yea, yea all Israel have transgressed thy law by departing. That they, like that, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Which remember that our the heathens are actually going to be cursed once we start being blessed. Um, Deuteronomy chapter thirty verse seven. You know, so right now we're cursed and our enemies are blessed. The main enemy being Esau, Edom. He's blessed right now. But guess what? His blessings is going to come to an uh, end. And our blessings is finna begin. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 through 15. And also the book of Leviticus chapter 26. We are going to be blessed real soon. So we're looking forward to that. And guess what? That's going to be a terror. That's going to be scary to our enemies. You know, Israel, they always hated, especially Esau, Edom. They always hated Jake ruling over them or having power over them. So hey, your fear is going to come to life, Esau. And it says... Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we sinned against him. Verse 12, and he had confirmed his words, which he spake against us. So the Lord did everything that he said he was going to do to the nation of Israel for our sins. He did everything he said he was going to do. So guess what? You heathens, y'all think y'all exempt? The Lord going to do the same shit to you. Y'all not exempt gonna get the same thing man even worse than what we got it because the Lord loves us and he punished us less than our iniquities deserve deserve which the book of um Ezra, Ezra told us that we supposed to be punished way more but the Lord punished us uh less than our iniquities deserve so he had mercy on us you know so verse uh, 13 uh, verse 12 again and he had confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us great a great evil. And so guess what? The Lord is going to bring evil on our enemies. Isaiah 45 and 7. Yahweh Bashim al is going to bring evil on our enemies. And there's nothing that they can do about it. And they're scared of that. They're afraid of it. Something in the back of their minds, know, they know that they're going to have to pay them. Nobody gets away with anything. The God, the God of the Bible is the great recompenser. He's the great payer backer, <laughs> if that's a word. He's going to pay you back in due time. And our enemies are going to be paid back, man. Definitely. There's no doubt about it. And they're scared of that. And it terrorizes them. And we are going to terrorize them. You know? It says, For under the whole earth, heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So, you heathens, y'all cannot walk a mile in our shoes because we have been dealt, we have been dealt with the worst of all the nations, the nation of Israel. And it's because the God of the Bible, because we um, disobeyed him and he recompensed us for it. So it's deserving, we deserve that because we wouldn't follow directions. But now we are going to come into under a new covenant that we are never gonna be able to disobey his commandments ever again. 
So therefore he has no reason to do anything evil unto the nation of Israel anymore. So he's gonna be doing evil unto you heathens because y'all are gonna be the ones that's not gonna be perfect. And we're gonna have to correct you and, and we're gonna do it according to what the law says. You know, we're gonna execute that judgment upon you that is written in the scriptures. So get ready for it. So this is gonna be a quick recap. The title of this lesson, we are gonna show our, we will show our enemies real terror. And the fact that us ruling over you is already gonna be terrible to you, terrorizing to you. Cause they're scared, they're frightened, they're afraid. So we are gonna terrorize our enemies as those they terrorized us. And we are going to pay you back according to what the scriptures have said. We're gonna pay our enemies back. And this is not our words. We are just breaking down what the scriptures actually mean. And they're telling you that the enemies of Israel will be paid back without the shadow of a fucking doubt. Man. We know that these things are true. We see it happening in living color, bro. We see the God of the Bible doing his will in the earth, man. And it's beautiful. And our enemies are gonna pay. They're gonna pay up front. They're gonna pay, man. So with that, Lord willing, let's let quick lesson with edifying through the spirit. Gotta get going on with my day. So Lord willing, this lesson is edifying, quick and through the spirit. Um, and hope you see the paint, the picture I'm trying to paint here. You know, so with that, Lord willing, I'm gonna close out by giving all praise and glory to the Hawa by Shim Yahu Shah by Shimra Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone who teach well. Once peace, love, and salutations to the brothers to his work in truth and in sincerity. When I say shalom, Kwam Yashallah, Wa Ba Baba, Wa Ba Shalom.